as some, I, I don't know if any of you know Rex Powell, but um, he's a, a science, scientist and science teacher, retired teacher, who realized that I had a passion for environmental education. So as soon as I retired, he started asking, would I please help J. Ock Audubon decide what to do with the funding they had been contributing for years to um, booklets that could be used in the classroom. And out of that um, request on his part, I invited a friend of mine, Anna Busby, uh, who also is a science teacher, to figure out what we might do. And um, we came to, we went then to the board of directors of uh, J. F. Audubon Society, and they, um, out of the offerings that we came up with, they chose to uh, pay for busing and organize trips to every elementary school in town. Well, when I heard that, I was kind of stunned because, you know, I was retired. <laughs> and, and I don't think they realized what a huge endeavor that would be to, to take every, every uh, even one grade level of every school to the wetlands. But with the help of an organization that at the time I didn't even know existed, Cobb Valley Heritage Alliance, uh, we were able to do some very successful pilots in May of 2006. And then uh, from there, we went ahead and have taken uh, almost every school, <coughs> multiple grades in some cases, to the wetlands. So that at this point, we've taken um, almost 40 trips uh, involving approximately 2,200 students, getting closer, uh, getting beyond that at this point and 335 teachers, parents, chaperones, and about 195 different uh, times that activities have been facilitated. Now, sometimes those are facilitated by the same people over and over. Thank goodness there are people who will volunteer repeatedly. Um, so really, the facilitator pool is, is uh, active facilitators, about 50 people. Most of them are retired scientists or naturalists or um, people who just have a passion for the wetlands, the history of it, um, other aspects of it. And from the beginning, I was adamant about not only presenting science activities when we're there, and we do have a wonderful opportunity to, to present information about herps, which, you know, amphibians and reptiles, um, macroinvertebrates, which are um, organisms in the water that are large enough to see without a microscope. Um, uh, we have many times botanists, uh, birders. Um, we've just had a wonderful array of scientists. And uh, actually recently we had a geologist who explained things about the area that I've been wondering about for years. I've also really wanted there to be artists, musicians, uh, people from theater to help kids of all interests connect with the natural environment. So we've been very fortunate to have People like Jen Klein at the KU Theater for Young People come and do activities up with us. Um, some artists have come. Um, so it's been a wide array of, of community members participating as well as schools. One of the partnerships that developed, a, well originally the, the first partnership with J.F. Audubon was Cobb Valley Heritage Alliance, which is now Cobb Valley Heritage Adventuring. And Bob Burkhardt is the one that kept that going when it went through a major transition. Um, Kansas Biological Survey, many, uh, a, a surprising number of the scientists, both on the staff and as graduate students, have come to facilitate activities. And when I say facilitate activities, I mean to present their knowledge and passion and involve kids in learning what's in the wetlands, um, ways to look at it differently. And uh, a surprising side benefit has been how many adults that have lived in Lawrence sometimes all their lives and never been out there or never really had much of an understanding of the, of the incredible, incredibly valuable kind of habitat it is. Uh, wetlands really function as the, as the kidneys of the earth. They filter water before it gets into larger bodies such as rivers and lakes and eventually the ocean. Uh, they create, uh, provide habitat for many animals that can live in no other habitat. Um, they, um, help control flooding. Um, there's just a huge number of things they do, and on a worldwide basis, well over 50% of the wetlands are gone. 
And even in Lawrence, you know, originally there were about 18,000 acres of wetlands along the Wakarusa. Now they're, and, and at one point there had pretty much dwindled to nothing. It had all been either uh, turned into farmland or paved for developments or various things. But more and more as people realize what the, the essential value of these environments, um, they are being either no longer destroyed or as in Lawrence, at least small amounts of them are uh, restored and maintained. Um, an example here being the Baker wetlands. So it's been a uh, pretty amazing journey for me. And what's uh, one of the things that is um, added to that is that the Lead Center of Kansas, uh, I don't know if any of you know Anthea Scoop is the Director of Education. She and I worked together on some other projects, and when she found out I was doing this, she decided that she would like to uh, try writing grants to the Kansas Arts Commission that would allow them, allow the Lead Center, to develop, um, every year the Lead Center has one performance that's geared specifically for kindergarten through second grade <coughs> students. So she now, for three years, has gotten funding for 200 of the second grade students to not only have things going on in their classroom to develop their understanding of science through art, but also 200 of them come out to the wetlands and I create those trips for them. Um, that's been a wonderful partnership that's ongoing. And um, Walker Vista Valley School this year contacted me and asked if I would consider helping them enrich their science program with trips to natural environments. So we took most of the classrooms in, uh, at Wakarusa Valley into natural environments this year. Um, and then the original project of taking every sixth grade in town um, is ongoing also, even though we don't, we are never able to do every sixth grade in one season and sometimes not in one year. So uh, it's been pretty fascinating. What's kept it going right now is uh, we, we were very fortunate to get the funding from Lawrence Breakfast Optimist Club. We also got some um, a second round of funding from the Elizabeth Schultz Environmental Fund through the Douglas County Community Foundation. They gave us $4,000 at the beginning of the project, and they gave us another $8,600 this year. And uh, that was to help us buy equipment, because a lot of the equipment that we'd like to have is pretty expensive. And um, so that's been great. And then the North Face um, Outfitters Company has also given us a grant this year. And in addition to that, um, we have gotten more and more KU students involved. I've met with kids that are in the, oh, I mean, I will call them kids to you. Sometimes when I call them kids to themselves, they're like, yes, we're adults. Um, but um, I, <laughs> Many of them has help, have helped us facilitate activities. They're usually biologists or environmental studies majors, environmental science majors, and they have been excellent. And then out of that came also an involvement with You Can Teach, which is a program at KU by which kids that are majoring in sciences and math can become certified to teach without going through the whole four-year program uh, for teacher certification. So it's an excellent program also. And one of those um, students came to me last year and asked if she could be a, an intern with the, with the project, which meant that she would put in 10 to 15 hours a week of work with the project. And so that's been amazing because now we can go in lots of new directions. And she actually has now gotten another K student to become an intern with us. So. The program um, has had its fluctuations over the years. Right now, it's in a choo stage. So it's, it's very exciting. Well, I don't want to, but what, well, here's what I do want to do. Um, I don't have PowerPoints and things like that to share with you, but I do have um, a couple of booklets that you could look through. Um, and then uh, these are ones that we use to show to teachers so that they have a sense of what goes on out there. Because as I said, well, environmental education is a, is a unique skill set. And not very many teachers actually even feel comfortable taking students into natural environments. So in addition to the funding shortages, um, there's a comfort level that keeps us from having kids be in natural settings to learn about them. 